So if you're working with the GFCI outlet for the first time, or maybe you haven't installed one for a while, the most common question or point of confusion is the difference between the line terminals and the load terminals. Now this is very simple concept, but let's review. And that is the line terminals are used for power that is coming in to your electrical box. So this would be providing power to this 15 amp GFCI outlet. And then the load terminals, if this was a brand new GFCI, you'd probably have yellow tape over these load terminals. These would be used, the tape would be removed if you have wires going to other downstream outlets that are not GFCI, they're just standard outlets, but you want GFCI protection. That is where you would run those wires through the load and then this GFCI outlet, just like this one behind me, will protect outlets downstream of that, which is the exact setup I have here. The problem is if you are installing a GFCI for the first time and you have multiple sets of wires in your electrical box, that can be a little confusing. So let me remove this GFCI and show you how to identify which wires go to which terminals so you make sure you wire it up correctly and safely the first time. So this is a classic example. The power is still off and I have one set uh, hot and neutral here and I have another set hot and neutral here. So I'll go flip the breaker on and then I'll perform both of those tests so you can see. So with the power back on, use the non-contact voltage tester and we can see this, this set of wires is gonna be my line side. So that's gonna bring power into the GFCI. And then we're gonna connect these up to the load side. And then that will provide GFCI protection to the outlet connected to these, which is just a standard style outlet. All right, so now we'll do the multimeter and the WAGO 221, the two wire, the three wire, the five wire, all have underneath one of the levers has a small test board. So you can place your probe underneath there and you'll get a connection to this bus bar and that's how you do your diagnostics or your troubleshooting for the circuit. So for this one, we will turn it to voltage, get our reading, connect our black probe up to ground, and then our red, and there's our 118. So confirming as the non-contact voltage tester and we're getting the voltage expected in this 120 volt circuit. So now I'm confident I have my line wires here, my load wires here. I'm gonna quickly wire that up. And then at the end, I'll also outline one of the most common misconceptions when it comes to the ground wire on a GFCI outlet. Now I have a ground available, so I'm gonna connect it. That is always best practice. And then remember, gold goes to the hot side, so the gold terminal, and that's on my line set. And then silver goes to neutral or the white wire. So we'll do gold again for black, and then silver to the white wire. And then I'll remount the GFCI receptacle and put on the faceplate. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of the difference between line and load. And also if you have those multiple wires within the electrical box, what to do with those, how to know which one is which and get those wired correctly. Now to the common misconception. You actually don't need a ground wire for a GFCI to operate as expected. You can check this video out right here where I actually replaced a ungrounded two prong old outlet in a house that has no grounds running to each electrical box with a GFCI three prong outlet. And at least in my area, that meets code. You do not need a ground for that GFCI to protect you just in case you come in contact with the hot side, it will still trip, it will still protect you. So that is a common misconception. But let me know if you have any other comments or questions down below the video in the comments and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.